First of all, I want to welcome everyone. My name is Wes Henderson with Angels Envy. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I see some wonderful, familiar faces here, as well as some new faces. So it's good to see those of you that I know, and, and, and happy to see those of you that I meet for the first time today. It's great to come into a room with friends, and old friends and new friends. So, are they going well for everyone so far? Good. Good. It's a, it's a great event. It's turning into every year. It seems like it's getting better and better. So. Uh, I'm real happy to be here. So we'll start real quick here as we're waiting on our cocktails. Uh, a, little, a little primer I put together for today, if you don't mind. Uh, I think I brought the wrong presentation though, so we'll just go through the one that I've got. Is this one okay? <laughs> this is very important, by the way. This is my backyard. Uh, location is very important, wherever you locate your operation. Our new distillery, though, is a little, it's in a little better location than this, but this is a great place to start for those of you that are, that are new to the business. Also equally important, once your distillate is finished, you've got to move it somewhere, and uh, it's important to make sure you have the right, uh, this is what I consider relatively no key. Nobody would notice us driving down the street at all. Uh, you would not be pulled over. Uh, and this is also equally important. You must have friends in the right places, and I understand Boss Hogg might be here this weekend, so that's very appropriate. And you have to know the difference, right? This is a guy that's going to help you out. Another good guy to help you out. This guy, not so much. And this is a good day at the office. And that's a bad day at the office. And I know those people, those are some of my relatives. So, uh, And you need one of these by the time you're done. <laughs> So anyway, all right, I thought that'd be fun, even though uh, it's not really informative. Well, I guess it is informative. Uh, any of you from any, any places where you still make moonshine, any states that, uh, yeah, in the backwoods? Uh, I know there's some in Kentucky. I think there's some in my county that they're, that they're still making it, but you would never know where it is. So uh, once again, uh, first of all, thank you, by the way. For those of you that heard, hear me speak, I'm very big on gratitude. And, you know, gratitude is something that, that I believe that we should all think more about. And I'm very grateful for where this brand is today. We're one of the fastest growing small batch programs in the country. And it started with you guys. Uh, I know it. I believe it. There's no doubt about it. This brand would not be where it is today if more of the enthusiasm that you all had for us and the support you've had for us and the continuing support as we get bigger. And I know sometimes, it's, you know, when the small teeny tiny guy comes in, we're still small and teeny tiny, by the way. Um, you know, you really root for that guy. And as they get a little bigger, you know, well, maybe they're, you know, they're not teeny tiny anymore. I don't, you know, maybe, you know, let's think about something else. And I haven't seen that happen with Angels Envy. And, and I'm really blessed. And, and we continue to believe that, that you guys are very valuable and so important to us. And when I do research and development and I do new things for the brand, that's one of the first things I think about. And things that I create, and I hope the rye is a good example of that. Um, the rye was something I created very, with very much with, uh, with bartenders and mixologists in mind. Uh, the proof, the, the taste profile. So we'll continue to do that. So once again, thank you. And so today we're gonna have fun. And for those of you that don't know the marks real quick, I'll run through them. Of course, we have our Angels Envy, our core brand, which is what we're gonna work with right now. This is our bourbon, it's finished in port wine barrels. It is a three to six, three to six four to six year old uh, bourbon finished in port barrels for another six months. So the, the, the taste profile and the age profile can vary from barrel to barrel. We have our rye whiskey, Caribbean cask finish. It's about an eight-year-old rye now with an additional 18 months on a rum barrel. And we have our cask strength, which Paul called me the number one spirit in the world in 2012. That's now come out again this year. So if you try to get that, you can when you get back to back home. It's just hitting the market. It's getting some great reviews, by the way. So uh, just some quick things. This is our new barrel warehouse. Uh, it was built in 1942. Now it's about uh, two-thirds full of barrels. Uh, we're building our, our home street on uh, Main Street in Louisville. That's, a, that's one view of the, of the distillery. It's, a, it's really cool what's happening with the now construction. It's just rock and roll. We just dropped our fermenters in. We just had our grain silo set on the side of the building yesterday. And here's a view inside. It's a 45-foot uh, column still with a pot still doubler off to the side of it. This is looking down from the second floor. You see the fermenters there? How many, you know, it's 45 feet tall. I don't know how many plates we end up. That's a question. That's a really good question. That's a really good question. I'll find out the answer for you. Okay. It's a big ass still. <laughs> how about that? B A S, big ass still. <clears throat> yeah, that's now I'm being on technical terms. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna put you in the shoes of 
really more often my sons than me because I'm on the road a significant amount of time. Every day in the distillery or in the, in the blending and bottling facility, we, we blend and bottle Angel's Envy. And it's probably the most important aspect of creating a product, and it's something that's one of the most overlooked aspects of creating a product, is the art of blending. And the challenge for you to, well, our challenge in the distillery is to make sure that we blend a consistent product every time, or as close as we can. Now, just Angel's Envy is definitely what I would call small batch. Uh, and I know that word's being thrown around, that phrase is thrown around rather flippantly these days. But uh, we're definitely a brand that, that, that is, is all handcrafted and there's a lot of hands in the whole process. But our job is to be consistent every day. Your job today is, is to create your own blend of Angel's Envy. So what we've got in front of us now, I'll walk you through it, is we have three distinct blends of Angel's Envy. Not three separate barrels, three blends. All right, so we're going to call them A, B, and C from left to right. So we'll always go from left to right here. Okay, so A, B, and C, three different blends. There are different characteristics for each one of these blends. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out sampling A, then we're going to sample B, then we're going to sample C. After we do that, that sampling, you all are going to get together in your groups, and you're going to create your own blend. Now, the way, the, the way that we do this is, so let's try, we'll try A, B, and C, and we'll say, okay, you think B has some wonderful vanilla notes that you want to be the dominant in your blend. So maybe we'll start out with, we've got a graduated cylinder, by the way. Maybe we'll start out with 60% of B. So let's say you decide in your group that C's got this, maybe this cherry or something I really want to pull out of it. So maybe we'll do 30% of C. And then we'll finish off with 10% A. So it has to add up to 100. You know, if you do Kentucky math, sometimes it adds up to 105, 110. Uh, we actually, believe it or not, we did a blend, a special blend. We put the blend percentages on the label and added up to 105%. No one caught it uh, until it got to the store. And we were a little bit embarrassed. We said, look, you know, Kentucky has its priorities, and unfortunately, education isn't one of them. <laughs> That's why there's more barrels of bourbon than people. God bless us. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So, you, so you're going to add those blend percentages. You're going to put them together. You're going to taste it. And you're going to say, well, you know, I, I like that vanilla that I wanted, but maybe I didn't get enough of it. So you'll raise B in the next sample a little bit. Maybe you'll do 70% of B. Is, am I, are you following me? Okay. And you'll lower one of the other ones. Now the cool thing about this process is sometimes you get what you expect. Sometimes you get what the expected result would be. Okay, if you raise B, you would think, okay, I'm going to get more vanilla. <coughs> Actually, what can happen, and sometimes you get that, what can happen is not only do you not get more vanilla, by changing that, you may completely eliminate it. It all happens on a very molecular basis. There's really no way to explain it. You can predict a certain amount of it if you've been doing it as long as we have, but we're still surprised. You know, I've done blends of Angel's Envy, and I mentioned cherry. We did a special blend not too long ago that it tasted so much like cherry, I had to rinse out the glasses because I thought there was cherry juice or something still in them. And it, there's really nothing in all those blends if you taste them separately that would make you think, oh wow, this is cherry. But when you put them together, just in those percentages, it exploded. I, I'd never be able to create it again. I don't remember what the percentages are but it was a very interesting exercise. So just keep that in mind. The first blend you do, don't stress over it, don't worry about it, that'll just be a baseline. So we'll be walking around, and we'll be walk, working with each group and talking and helping you through the blends. So let's start, do we have any questions right now before we continue? Okay, good. I love working with people that, that, that know the industry. Um, I don't get a lot of silly questions that way. Uh, a lot of fun questions, but not a lot of silly questions. So let's start out with A. If, if y'all could pick up A and maybe pass it to your group, uh, let's, let's, I'd like some impressions on the nose of A, the first one, the one on the, on the far, uh, furthest to the left. So for, sorry, furthest to the left, if you are me looking at your table, I know you're going to look on the floor. So the one, if you're, if you're me on this side, on your left. Right, to your left. If you're on Richard's side, it's going to be on his right. This wall. Whoa, man. This is too much thinking here. Start with this wall. Okay. So from left to oh, Chris, oh, Chris is pointing that way. Oh, there's people pointing in the back. Okay. All right. So if you're facing me, it's going to be all the way to the left. If you're facing that way, it's going to be all the way to the right. Is that correct? Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you leave me? Let me fly airplanes, and I don't know which way is which way is which. Actually, I got that pretty good. So, all right. So tell me what you think of that. Any on the nose? Give me some some notes on the nose. A little bit of citrus, okay. I'll go with that. 
Somebody say cherry. Power of suggestion. No, I think that cherry's definitely there. What? Orange oil, okay. Maybe those citrus, those citrus notes as well. But you guys are a lot better than I am at this, probably. So, so let's hear some, some of the any any other notes. Spice. A little bit of smoke and tobacco. A little bit of smoke tobacco. That's a very common descriptor. <laughs> it is. You need more original. Like, how about like uh, Mongolian, uh, uh, you know. Uh, Couch spikes or something like that. You know? <laughs> You're close. So, so, there you go. That's done. You weren't really close. Uh, all right, let's take a drink. Now, I will tell you that of these blends, now I'm moving around too much for you guys. I'm sorry. I, I, it's the ADD, OCD thing. Um, these blends, each one of these blends would not really be a bottle of Angel's Envy. Certain combinations of these would be angels and me. So, how about some uh, opinions on the taste profile of A, please, or some thoughts on what A is? Eh? Is it uh, not for fish? Not for finish. That's a really good answer. It's not entirely true, but I'll, I'll tell you why. It's, it's a pretty good answer here in just a minute. Any other thoughts on that? What do y'all think about us releasing just a bourbon that's not finished in port? Think that might be interesting? Yeah, it tastes good. Of course it's going to taste good. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't do it if it didn't. Anybody else on the flavor? Uh, a piece of fruit. Medium fruit. What do you mean by that? You're talking about your, your perception of fruit. Your, you know, let's drill down on this a little bit. Are you talking about your perception of the heat? Or the yes. perception of the fruit? And we all know that perception is perception, but fact is fact. This is, all of these are 86 proof. Now, but that doesn't mean that you're not going to perceive it as a different proof. And we know that consumers are the same. We do the same thing. Consumers definitely do that. Is that your perception of what the rye is a great example. Okay, it's 100 proof. Most of us in this room wouldn't freaking guess it's 100 proof. You know, we're, we're experts. We do this every day. And it's a matter of perception. So, um, so this one you perceive as being a little hotter, maybe, or a little more, a little higher proof, or a little lower proof? Okay. It dries in your pretty quickly, but not too We're talking about A, right? A. Right. Really good. Um, I get a little bit of tan at tannin in this, yeah. and then because of that, it's got a relatively short finish. It's there and it's gone. It dries up quickly. So um, the other comment up front here was was that it was not ported, not port finished Angels Envy, and I believe just from tasting this that this this is a sample that's been finished in port for a very short period of time. So you're not getting some of those dried fruit notes that you would normally get in, as it continues to, to finish in the pork barrel. So that was a really good observation. Uh, okay, any other thoughts on A before we move on to B? Orange, mocha. Okay, very good. Anybody else? All right, let's go on to B, please. I'm not gonna say left to right, I'll just say B. The middle sample, that makes it easy. Doesn't matter which way you're looking now, it's in the middle. <laughs> You guys been drinking for a couple days. I want to try to make it as simple as I can. Oh, let me try being here. What? Okay, you're certainly going to start to pick up some of the pork characteristics a little bit more. Has like a sweeter taste. I'm not necessarily saying like sugar content. I'm saying like you know that. Yeah, not necessarily higher in sugar, but. Uh, like you, know, you measured it by bricks or whatever, it wouldn't certainly be a higher sugar content, but it, it tastes like it's a little sweeter, maybe. I, I perceive that also. Anybody else have any thoughts about B? Comments on the taste as well? Cola, cherry. Cherry? Cherry, 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 cola. Cola, cola. Okay, cola is in like coca or cola? The cola did not. The what? No. <laughs> okay. Got it. She asked a lot of questions. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I guess vanilla. Vanilla? That's that, that, that that's that's a, certainly a good one. I think you said has a little bit of nuttiness. It's appropriate for us. Um, <laughs> you know, vanillin is one of the easily most easily recognizable uh, aromas and flavors to humans. So picking up vanilla is 
you'll see it very, very commonly in bourbon. And it's something that many, most people find to be pleasant, which once again, I'm sure with your experience that you notice that as well. Any other thoughts about B? Maple. Maple, very good. And where does that maple come from? Hmm? The caramelization. Most of that, that flavor comes from the caramelization that you get when you, when you uh, char the inside of that barrel. Leathery, that's good. I like leather. No. <laughs> You don't see me blush. Never. <laughs> That's it. I forgot who I was with. We were at the castle last night. I know. It was the dungeon of pain, yes? Is that it? It was awesome. That was a DJ. Okay. okay. Spice notes are toned down, okay. So damp it down a little bit. A little longer finish, maybe. Uh, the port characteristics start, maybe will coat your palate a little bit more. I think B's a good sample. B's a, B's a really good uh, baseline for a lot of things that we're gonna do here today. All right, George, let's move on to C. So I, I wanna give you all plenty of time to blend here. I just quoted you, I like leather, so. <laughs> and Twitter's gonna just boom. <laughs> Thank you. I'll get a call from my wife in a minute saying, the hell are you doing down there? Same thing we do at home, honey. Nice going to Twitter, too. I really like C. There you go. This one is probably finishing the pork barrel the longest amount of time. So you really start to get a more aggressive fruit. This is probably overly porty for what you would get in a, in a typical bottle of Angel Vendee. You'll find that, that you're not going to get hit with as much of this fruit. So it comes back to blending full circle. So your job is to create a taste profile that you like. I mean, you may like that. You may like that better than what we've got in our, our regular bottle every day. Okay, so, so blend it accordingly. <clears throat> Any other thoughts on the taste or the, the, the aroma? Cinnamon. Uh, time? Cinnamon. Cinnamon? Okay. Long, long, long finish? Yeah, it's there, man. It's there and it's hanging around for a while. Anybody else have any thoughts before we start blending on these things? Okay, any other questions now before we start the blending session about Angel's Envy or anything like that? We'll talk some more here. We're not saying goodbye, but we'll have plenty of time for that. Okay, so you know what your exercise is now. You're going to pick the one that you think is a baseline, is your favorite out of A, B, and C. You'll start that with the highest percentage. You'll pick the next one that's the lowest percentage, the final one is the smallest percentage. Low, and high, low, mid, high, medium, low. Uh, I recommend you do, this is really going to screw you guys up. Um, these are 100, are these 100 ml graduated cylinders? These are 100 milliliter graduated cylinders. I recommend that you do 50 ml samples. So there's gonna be some math required here. So if you're doing a 50 ml sample and you're doing 60% of A, how many mls do you need to put in there? You got one, anybody else? One of us here can do that. We try to have an Asian guy in all these because of things are complicated and we know where we can go. So thank you, sir. I appreciate it. It's very fun. We'll edit that out of our company video here. Um, but you got a white cap with a boy from Kentucky here, so you got to have something to balance out that stupidity here. So we got a smart guy. All right. You guys ready to blend? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Yes. Do we know what the mash bills are, or are they same It's mash all the same mash bill. All the same mash bill, all the same fruit. Now, oh, by the way, you have empty glasses. So save your blends as you go along so you compare them. All right, so that's what your empty glasses are for. So blend one, two, and three, or whatever. Save your glasses, and we'll come around and help if you have any questions. Have fun. Um, that you all hit the sweet spot, and, and you knew what you wanted to accomplish. I like that... Uh, some people, everybody approached it a different way. Um, up front here, we decided to, to, to went with two distinct blends 
really on a mission. Number one was to create more of an American style whiskey or bourbon, which you know we would and we describe American style. It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but we may describe that as a little bit bolder, maybe a little more heat, you know, but but still very complex, not overwhelming in that direction. The other blend was what we called maybe. Ian mentioned this maybe being more of a, of a uh, European type of blend. Uh, those Europeans are a little softer than us Americans. You know how it is. <laughs> I managed to offend everyone yet. Uh, so, uh, so something a little bit softer, maybe a little bit more port influence. And, and, but and long story short, they're both very good. They were approached from a very different direction, which I, I, I really like that. So does this give you an understanding and appreciation for blending maybe a little bit more? It was mentioned here. Someone mentioned that in the back. What we do is we do, a, we'll wrap up here in just a minute. When we do a blend of Angel's Envy, we only do 500 gallon batches. So we'll start, and that's about 10 barrels, depending on what the outage is on those barrels that we're using. So we'll pull, as an example, say we'll pull six barrels out of, of barrels we think we have a good taste profile on. We'll dump all of them, then we'll taste it. We'll see where we are. So we'll say, and very similarly to what you did here, let's say that blend doesn't really have enough of that port influence that we want. So we're going to go to the warehouse and we're going to pull barrels that may be finished in port longer or we taste them, have those characteristics. So maybe we'll grab one of those, we'll dump it in there. Now we're up to seven barrels, right? So we still need three more. And then it's this tinkering back and forth to get it to the taste profile. So if you can imagine we've got you know, tens of thousands of barrels to choose from and each blend is done by hand, only 10 barrels, how, and you saw it with your blends here now, even 5% can make a difference, 10% makes a huge difference in the outcome of your, so that's one barrel for us. So if we're doing 10 barrels, one barrel is 10%. One barrel can kick the whole thing into a totally different direction. So we have to be very careful about what we do. The good thing about it is if you end up with a batch and you think, well, you know, it's not quite where we want to be, we'll set that tank aside. We'll blend it through, you know, in some shape, form, or fashion later. So it's not the end of the world. So don't think you can wait outside, we'll dump it, you can have it, okay? We're not going to throw it away. Um, we're going to keep it. So once again, this just kind of gives everyone an appreciation. Not that you don't appreciate what we do. Certainly, I know you do. But it, I guess appreciation is not a good word. An understanding of how subtle and intricate the blending process is. Uh, any questions? Yes, ma'am. Because they have time to right? Could you do a little bit in one of these first? A little bit of one of those? Well, we got a whiskey. Oh, you mean before we... Before you dump up the barrels, you put a little bit No, of that might be a smart thing to do. <laughs> Well, it's a little difficult to do that because if you think of all these barrels, if we took the time to do that with every barrel, it'd take, it'd take forever to do it. So we're pretty comfortable with picking barrels, barrels that we think are a general profile, dumping those, and then correcting it from that point. We're pretty comfortable with that. Now, Angel's Envy, because it's a hand-blended product, you may see subtle differences from blend to blend. You know, you, most people would not realize that unless you had them next to each other. At the very beginning, you know, people said, well, you know, it's got to be exactly the same, 100% the same every time. I rejected that. You know, I wanted a consistent taste profile, but I said, Angel's Envy can be a journey of discovery. There's nothing wrong with little nuances as you, as you go from blend to blend. And some people are collecting those blends. We have the names on, we have the numbers on the side of the bottles and the blend batches. Any other questions? Yes, sir. What's, uh, in this year, what's the percentage? What's the percentage in that? I don't know because I, I didn't really add these samples together to come up with that. You guys did a really good job. I would say Angel's Envy is a predominantly C, a uh, higher percentage of C, followed by B, and then followed by A. Boom! Well, there's not a wrong answer to all this, yes ma'am. What do you get for making the best blend? She meant to say, what do we get? Well, what are your percentages and then we'll challenge you. Get to, you get to drink all the stuff you just blended. <laughs> Anybody else? Any other questions? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, consistency. Can you talk about uh, how uh, your product uh, gets consistency? I mean, when you're doing how we manage to get it consistent. I did something a couple months ago that we probably should do more often, but we don't. I told my son Kyle, and Kyle does our blending and bottling. Kyle's 26, he's a biochem major from Florida State, amazing kid. I said, Kyle, we'll pull the very first blend of Angels Envy we did. And, and then go to the bottling line right in this minute and pull a batch from that. And I want, to, I want you to bring them over, I want to taste them. I could not tell the difference between the very first batch we did and the batch we did that day. That's not to say that, that, that it doesn't happen because I know it does happen because I've tasted batches that can be a little bit different. 
but intuitively now we know the blend, the blend, we know the brand, we're able to dial it in to a reasonable degree of certainty most of the time. I was real impressed by that. I was like, well, holy shit, you know, I didn't think that was gonna happen. Um, so we should probably go back and do that a little more often, but we're still, I mean, we're still learning. Yeah. We're still, man, we're, compared to some of these other guys, I mean, we're like a little fly on the wall as far as size of the company. But I tell you what, we're doing some cool things. When we get the new distillery open, we'll be able to do some even cooler things. Anybody else? I think that, yeah, the consistency between the first batch and this is a, is a you know, it's a sign of uh, the strength of the tall still. You know, okay. that if your distill is consistent, your aging process is always going to be very Yep. Because you're, you're using new oak. Different trees have different sugar contents in yep. them as well. So the mineralization will never be the same barrel to barrel. Mm -hmm. And then the air and the circulation around the barrel in the brick house is always going to make the two barrels never be the same. But right. you know, you're going to be the same. Uh, and from certain areas of the warehouse, but that consistency really is just a testament to the installation. It is. That's a really good point. I'll say that for those of you who already repeated, for those of you who didn't hear it. Um, distillate, the distillation process, there are so many variables in, in, this, in this whole process. Where you, where you put the barrel in the warehouse, uh, how the sugar content of the original barrel, how it's charred, even though we have a, we use the same type of charred, but there can be subtle differences there as well. You're right. Yeah, how cold or how hot that particular summer or winter is, those things we don't have any control over. Where it is in the warehouse, the level, whether it's further on the outside of the warehouse, whether it's closer to the inside of the warehouse. So, Column distillation, I mean, I love pot still distillation. There's certainly a place for it. And we have a pot still in our new setup. We can isolate for smaller runs, but for, for bourbons and American whiskey, for bourbons and American whiskeys, I will say that column distillation is the most consistent way to produce the consistent product all the time. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. I think it is, okay, for what we do, but um, the column distillation definitely rules there. Any other, do you have questions, sir? Yeah, so to follow up on that uh, question. From we don't do follow-ups. <laughs> um, you know, is it mostly a subjective uh, quality assurance, quality control, or do you do any gas chromatography? We, we, we can't afford a GC machine. You know, um, you know we, have a, we have assets now that we can use, you know, at other at much bigger R&D, you know, facilities. You could send it out, though. So. Oh, we could send it out. I mean, we could, you know, I, I'm not as concerned with GC. We'll do... Uh, uh, we'll do uh, chill flocculation on, and chill nephlos tests, which also works with turbidity, and there's a color element there as well. Um, that ha I'm sorry. What are the analysis uh, methods to see what specific fractions of each? But what are those specific? To uh, chill flocculation is something that happens when uh, when you take a distilled product that is under like 92 proof, and it gets below freezing, and when it gets below freezing. There's some, some contents like cellulose and other things that come out of solution and become solid and appear in the bottle. Honestly, it looks like snot. It's not a pleasant thing to see cosmetically. Now, it's a it's a it, it's all taste, it's all natural, it doesn't hurt you, but consumers don't like that. So what we do is we'll 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 chill that down, we'll check and see, or we use the Neflos test to see whether or not that's gonna flock. And then if it's gonna flock, we'll subject we'll give it some carbon filtration or something like that. Very light carbon filtration. Every time you filter bourbon, it takes flavor and color out of it. So we don't want to filter it any more than we have to. We don't chill filter. So coming full circle, you've heard chill filtration, right? That's what chill filtration is. It's lowering the, the product down to the temperature where all that those solids come back into solid from uh, from a solution, and then they filter those out. Uh, it kind of sucks because there's flavor in all that stock that we pull out of there. So. Take that, edit that out. <laughs> so, so because you do uh, empty and then fill back into a secondary barrel, um, is there any filtration from the first barrel to the second, or is that for you basic emptying? Emptying it from one to the other. Yeah. yeah. We don't do any, I mean, we do, we do filtration of large particularly. We run it through a screen. Sure. It's going to take the big chunks out, but other than that, we just dump it right in there. Then we, we do the carbon filtration after that. All right, so these are the Henderson boys, not all of them, almost all of them. Uh, here's here's uh, Kyle. Kyle does our blending and bottling for us. Um, he's 26. Spencer's 17. Spencer's actually, Spencer's taking flight lessons now. He wants to be a pilot. He's 17. Ian is 12. Andrew works in blending as well. Andrew's 21. This is a cousin. He doesn't count. He counts, but he's not. Uh, uh, Christian is uh, 14. He's about this tall now. 
and Connor works in bottling. Connor's 19. You know, both he's a student as well as Andrew. So that, those are the guys that, uh, yeah, six boys. Um, You're a good Catholic family. Good Catholic family. We kept trying for the girl, and it never happened. Uh, after a while, you must stop the insanity. <laughs> I should have a picture of my wife up here. She's the real yeah, talent sure, behind sure. the uh, And it's funny, she's about five foot tall, 98 pounds soaking wet, and she will kick your ass. Uh, I like God bless her. Um, so this is, my, of course, my son Kyle. We look like he just whooped somebody's ass. Uh, exactly right. A copper whiskey, a copper whiskey thief will definitely just ruin your day. And that's my father, and I think it's very important that uh, we mention Dad at, at everything we do because Dad is really the, Dad was the inspiration behind Angels Envy, and uh, even though he passed away in 2013, he still continues to be the standard that we set in anything we do. I think about that. I talk to him, you know, and uh, uh, we're blessed that we had him. And unfortunately, we don't have him anymore, but he's still in spirit. So, um, so come and see us. Are there any other questions here before we go on? <laughs> I'll be back there. I'd love to. All right, so if we're, we're about out of time. Uh, I want to say thank you very much for. Yes, sir. Yes, Rob. Uh, quick question. Yeah. The Angels Envy blend that you do for Total Wine with the sticker on the side, mm -hmm. what is the difference? I heard it's a climate control, and that's the only little difference, or is there something different? No, that's not that's not accurate. It's, you know what we did with Total Wine? The exact thing you just did here. We sat down with them. We sat out with their managers and they said, you know, we blended A, B, and C, and they came up with a blend that they thought was unique for Total Wine. It's, it's amazing. It's awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a great program. We do it now retail. I mean, not, not retail. We do it on premise now more than we do it. We're, we're kind of backing off on the off premise. So if you've got a, in any of your places you want to do it, we do 20 case meals on it, 26 packs. You feature it in a cocktail, it's out the door. Bring in your staff to help blend it, bring in a couple of your best customers that will drink it. If you've got a package license, hell, that's even better. You think 20 cases, that's a lot? No. What happens is people run out of it too early. You know, it'll go. So if you want to do this, yeah, if you want to do this, let me know. We'll talk about coming out and doing it at your place, too. So, All right, uh, full circle. Come back to the gratitude thing again. Thank you very much for coming today. Thanks again for everything Thank you, you do. Thank you.